Hello, and welcome to Stream of Conscience, brought to you by Democracy for America, Fairfield County. I'm your host, John Hartwell. Our guest today is Daphne Dixon, an eco-entrepreneur environmentalist who's been working closely with local leaders, businesses, and residents to raise awareness and engage people in green living practices. Daphne started Conscious Decisions in 2007 to connect and educate people on sustainable and eco-friendly living practices through websites and events. She founded the annual Fairfield County Green Fair and the Fairfield County Green Coast Awards and co-founded the Green Market Exposition in Bridgeport and Live Green CT in Norwalk. Daphne is the membership co-chair of the Southern Connecticut Green Building Council and a committee member of Sustainable Stamford and Fairfield's Earth Day celebration. She's the host of Fairfield Green Drinks and Bridgeport Green Drinks, co-host of Stanford Green, Green Drinks, and involved with many other regional and statewide sustainable initiatives. Daphne was named director of Green Towns in November 2010. Daphne, welcome to Stream of Conscience. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. You've got so many things going on. Uh, so many organizations you've started, that you run, that you're involved in. What got you started? Why did you become involved in environmental movement? Well, you know, uh, back in 2007, there seemed to be such uh, a current of, of green, and so many people seemed to, to start becoming interested in it. A lot of businesses started, and uh, there was just so much information out and about that um, I just really wanted to, to learn more about green. So I started gathering information and just trying to educate myself on all the great green things that were going on. And what did you find when you first started off? What was, what was really hot at that time? Well, actually the first thing I, I discovered was, um, I was at the time, I was going through the Master Gardener program at the Bartlett Arboretum. The Master um, Gardener program- In Stanford. In Stanford. And the Master Gardener program actually started years ago and it's an it's a nationwide program and it's a wonderful program and I took it just to learn more about horticulture responsible gardening and what I discovered when I went through the master gardener program was that I was making all sorts of mistakes in my own yard doing all kinds of things that I, I didn't realize had a had an ill effect on our environment I was surprised at all the things I was doing that were wrong um, you know, using miracle Grow, mm. I, I had a lot of unusual plants, mm -hmm. and I didn't have too many native species. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that really, really motivated me to start Conscious Decisions and try to help other people learn what they don't know. And so what does Conscious Decisions do? What's the, what's the focus there? Conscious Decisions is uh, an umbrella organization for many events and different websites. So what we do collectively is provide websites and events to educate people and to bring people together to share what they're doing, to share the green businesses that are out there and just the new innovations that are all around us. And how long has that been going? About four years, about four years. And does it have a membership base? Um, how, do, how do people get involved in Conscious Decisions? They get involved by participating in the different events, either the Green Fair in Stanford, the, green, the events you mentioned, Green Market Exposition, mm -hmm. Green Coast Awards, voting for the great green and responsible businesses, and Live Green Connecticut, and, um, and Green Drinks. So you know, anyone who wants to get involved in green, there's so many opportunities, and all of those are events that we help to support. So talk a little bit, if you would, about green drinks, because that's been going on in various venues around the county for several years now. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so tell us what happens in those events. Well, green drinks actually started in 1989 in London at wow. a pub called um, The Slug and Lettuce. Uh -huh. And a group of people were just talking about their daily work, which happened to be they were in the green industry. And they, they noticed that at the other end of the bar, there were some colleagues that they, they sort of knew. They were also in green, and they invited them over, had a couple beers, and they had this um, wonderful conversation that lasted, you know, hours about all the great sustainability projects and initiatives and businesses around green. So they had such a wonderful time. They agreed to meet every month, once a month, to tell their friend and tell their friends, and just have these informal gatherings to share ideas. Well, the idea was so um, organic. And, and it really hit a nerve. And the idea of green drinks and meeting once a month, you know, in an informal way, spread across Europe. 
And then in 2002, it came to this country and started in New York City. And Margaret Lidecker runs the New York City Green Drink, so that gets hundreds of people. It's mm. fantastic. And then uh, in 2004, it came to Connecticut. And, and as far as I know, it was started by Remy Chevalier in Norwalk in 2004. Right. So where are they here at the local area? I know you have one going on in Fairfield. There's, yeah, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. The best place to find your local green drinks is to go to greendrinks.org. Okay. And you can find the, all the green drinks that are going on in Connecticut. There's over a dozen. And then, you know, if you happen to be traveling, you, you might stumble upon a green drinks anywhere in the country. There's, there's over 400, and nationwide there's o over eight, 800. So you run one now in Fairfield and one in Stamford, mm -hmm. uh, and that's every month? It's every month. And what goes on at a green drinks now? I mean, when someone comes, what do they find? They find, you know, every green drinks is different, and then there's other hosts that have green drinks throughout, throughout Fairfield County and beyond, and everybody has a little bit of a different style. Mm -hmm. The ones that we run in Fairfield and Stanford are, are pretty casual, and Bridgeport are pretty casual. There's no charge to attend. We usually have a, um, a featured business or somebody there to share information. There's not usually a lot of presentations or anything formal. It's just very informal. And the idea is that people talk to each other and share what they know one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. And you know, the, we get anywhere from you know, 20 to 50 people once a year in Stanford we do green drinks at the Green Fair, mm. and we get anywhere from, uh, you know, 60 to a couple hundred people. Now, the, the Green Fair is a much larger event than, than green drinks because it, it happens only once a year. Right, right? It, that's right. We, so we get a couple hundred people at that one. That's usually the, um, the second Wednesday in November, and it's at the Stanford Marriott. At the Stanford Marriott. And so and it will, again, this year be at the second Wednesday of November? Yes, it's our fourth annual okay. Fairfield. Um, Green Fair, and it's actually November 16th from 5.30 to 9. And what's fun about that one is we actually have a reception for the Green Coast Award winners from 5.30 to, 5.30 to 6. So throughout the year, people can vote for their favorite green and responsible businesses at greencoastawards.com. And the winners are, are tabulated, and, uh, and then they're announced at the Green Fair. So people vote at greencoastawards.com, mm -hmm. and then the winners are presented every year at the Green Fair in, in Stanford. Right. And what kind of, of companies or, or activities, I don't know, is it just companies that you vote for? Or it's is it all different. Um, there's organizations, there's grassroots organizations, there's large companies. RBS won last oh, year. Okay. They have Royal Bank a, of Scotland. Mm -hmm. All right. They have that beautiful office in Stanford. Mm -hmm. They built it. Um, very environmentally friendly. They compost. They have a kitchen in their building where they, they compost their scraps. Their whole setup and culture and the way they run that, that building is, is, um, is a real model to follow. You know, Bigelow Tea has also been a winner in the past. Okay, they're based in? They're in Fairfield. In Fairfield. Mm -hmm. They have a, a green team, um, and they have a real green culture, the way they run their business as far as how much, you know, their paper products. They've gotten rid of um, the, the, the shrink wrap mm -hmm. to a large degree and a lot of their packaging. Okay. So they really look at how they can how they can run their business in a more eco-friendly way. So both of those are large businesses. Mm -hmm. RBS obviously is a worldwide bank. Right. Uh, Bigelow Tea is a, a major mm -hmm. supplier. What about small businesses? Yeah, the, well those really are the heart and soul, aren't they? Right. Uh, the business that has won the last couple of years, one, there's many, but one that comes to mind is MoGreen.us and that's run by Dan Delventhal. And he started a business which is about real mowing, and that's R-E-E-L, real mowing. So he mows lawns, and he's got a crew. He has franchises in different towns throughout the county. And they'll mow your lawn. They do a wonderful job with real mowers. So the As old in the old push mm -hmm. mowers? Yeah. And what's great okay. is, you know, once a week during the summer, I'll, I'll be working away, and I sort of will hear a, a swoosh. Yeah. And it's the sound of that real mower cutting the lawn. Uh, right. It's just a beautiful sound. It's just it's much different than it's certainly a lot less noisy than than um, power mowers. It is and the less pollution as well. Yeah, uh, it gives you a good workout. I remember as a kid trying to push one of those things around. And it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. It's hard work. Well, I, I don't have too much grass. You know, I try to do a lot of native plants now. Sure. But they do very large lawns, and they actually tie together a couple mowers. I think he's actually tied together three. 
Okay. And he, you know, he can do. One person can push three of these things. Yeah, he My can goodness. do, you know, a couple of acres. Wow. So, so the Green Coast Awards is, is great, and so that's a fun part of the Green Coast Award, but the the Green Market. Excuse me. That's a that's a great part of the Fairfield County Green Fair. So, so that's the Fairfield County Green Fair, mm -hmm. and then uh, just recently you were doing. Um, one in, in Bridgeport. Tell us about that. The Green Market Exposition. Okay. That is really a celebration of green jobs and green building. And we try to celebrate and showcase where the new green jobs are. You know, a couple of years ago there was a lot of talk about this building this green collar economy. Mm. And it's kind of hard to see sometimes where those jobs are. Right. But there really is a lot going on around us. There's schools like Norwalk Community College with the best program that teaches students how to get green jobs. They teach um, a lot of different courses. Gateway Community College also offers a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our speakers at the Green Market Exposition actually is, is um, in phase one of a very interesting project called Metro Crops, which will bring urban farming to, to cities like Bridgeport. And that will create jobs. But not only are there, you know, very interesting, you know, jobs in the future to come, but there's everyday jobs. For example, there's the Home Energy Solutions mm -hmm. program here in Connecticut. Right. And um, that's the program where you can have, for $75, have somebody come into your home, do a home energy audit. For only $75, get hundreds of dollars of, of um, insulation and all kinds of great things, energy saving things for your house. There's, there's dozens of those companies now. It's a brand new sort of field, dozens and dozens of companies. All of those companies hire lots of people, you know. So that's a great example of a green job. And those uh, that home energy audit is subsidized, mm -hmm. if I if I'm correct. Uh, there's a some. It's either the government or the or the the electric companies who are subsidizing people to come in because they want mm -hmm. you to yeah. find ways to make your your home more uh, greener. I believe it's a rate payer program, mm -hmm. so that a little percentage of all of our of our bill goes into this fund, and mm -hmm. then that helps to fund the Home Energy Solutions program. But it's one of the best programs in the country. Most states have Home Energy Solution programs, mm -hmm. but Connecticut has has really, if one of the best, if not the best program in the country, really? because of the seventy-five dollar pay, mm -hmm. and then you get all of those all of those other services. Right. So it's really something people should take advantage right. of. And I see these these guys who are participating in the program as vendors. I see them at, at various events mm -hmm. around uh, the county. Yeah. Um, you know, then they're saying, "Come, you know, sign up. I'll come to your house and do the energy audit, find right. out how you can save money, and uh, it'll only cost you seventy-five bucks." Yeah, it's I, a it's a wonderful program. It is. But I think one of the challenges these days is that there's so much information mm. out there and. You know, it's really a very small percentage of people in the state that have even taken advantage of this program. And, and just getting the word about, out about home energy solutions or about, um, you know, responsible gardening or, or all the, you know, electrical vehicle charging stations that are, that are popping up all over the place, I think is a real challenge. I was talking even with somebody today who lives in Stanford, and I asked him if he, if he knew about single stream recycling, which has been going on in Stanford now for a few months. Mm -hmm and he had no idea what I was talking about. Westport's just moved it to mm -hmm. it as well. Can you explain what that is? Right, yeah, I can. I love single stream recycling. It gives residents the ability to commingle all sorts of things I used to just throw in the trash into their recycling bin. So you don't have to sort or put paper in, you know, in bags and tie it up with twine. Every town has a list of things that you can recycle, and the list is pretty extensive. It's, mm. it's, it's basically, it's cans, it's plastic, it's all kinds of things. I mean, I, I don't really have, even have any trash anymore. It pretty much all goes in the recycling bin. Really? Yeah. Um, I need another one. I, <laughs> I need a third one. <laughs> I used to uh, go up to Ridgefield a lot when mm -hmm. I was running for state senate, and one of the places that I would campaign would be at the recycling center. Mm -hmm. And Ridgefield's got a wonderful recycling center, but it's very labor intensive for the people who are bringing the things to be recycled. There were many, many different containers, and yeah. you put this kind of plastic here and much. that kind of plastic there and this kind of paper here and that kind of paper there. Literally, um, there were many, many different bins mm -hmm. for each kind of, of uh, you know, what I would think of as plastic or bottles or paper, but no, they had lots of subcategories. And what really amazed me was how patiently people 
were hmm. and spent the time to go back and forth. And so, you know, a, a trip to the recycling center in Richfield could take you a half an hour, 45 minutes. If, if you were doing a week's worth of recycling all at mm -hmm. one time, it could easily take you half an hour to 45 minutes to, to do it, to do it right. right. Um, so what you're saying is mm. that with single stream, this goes away. You just put it all in one bin So can you and put paper and plastic it's and amazing. bottles? It's amazing. Yes, it's great. It looks so messy. I mean, that's yeah. the one thing, you know, I'm used to having it all organized. But um, now right. I just throw it all in and throw look the other in. way. And but it doesn't matter. not garbage, matter. obviously. Not, not garbage, stuffs. not food stuffs, but, right. but all the other things. But you know. virtually anything else. Yeah, it's, it's great. And one of the great things about that, too, is that because it's easier, more people will do it. And it saves the towns money because then they have less garbage to cart away. Mm. So a lot of times people think, green, oh, it's so expensive. Sometimes it is. But there's things like single stream recycling, which actually cut down on costs in the city. So it's a good thing. Well, and uh, you know, I mean, as the technology around these things gets better and better, then mm -hmm. we can reduce the cost and increase the convenience. And as you say, more people will take it up. Right. Uh, we'll have a net benefit. You were mentioning before um, what you learned in your in your Master Gardener program, mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned something about uh, Miracle Grow, uh -huh. uh, not to n name a product, I but know. but um, the larger issue, if I understand it, is around both pesticides. Mm -hmm and uh, chemicals which make things grow, which have lots of nitrogen in them. Right. And, and they go down, all of this makes its way down to the rivers and eventually into the harbors. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge problem in Norwalk Harbor and the Saugatuck Harbor with uh, all the bottom feeding fish are dying. Mm -hmm. um, we have dead zones. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder, you know, what is it that people can do to, to you know, do their own contribution here, make things a little bit better? Well, the way I look at it now is I just think about anything I put in my garden, mm -hmm. is that something I want to drink? And if it's not okay. something I want to drink, right. I, I don't put it in my garden. Okay, so, so basically we're talking about water. Water or, you know, very... You iced know, tea. <laughs> iced tea, that's caffeine. Um, you don't want to drink caffeine. Well, there's, you know, ca you know caffeine in the water, that, right. that's a problem too. Yeah. But. Um, you know, you just you just want to really be careful. Pesticides, I think people just really have to understand that uh, there's a lot of alternatives that one can use. Sure. And if anyone ever has a question about what to do, how to get rid of a bug, not to, that you ever really want to get rid of a bug, you just want to live in harmony with the bug. If you call the Bartlett Arboretum mm. during the summer especially, mm -hmm. they have these master gardeners, I was one of them once, that are on staff and answer the phone. You can ask any question, any gardening question, and they they might not have the answer right at the fingertips, but they will get you the I'll answer. Find it for you. I have several friends who've gone through the program, and every one of them loved it. No, oh, it's, it's 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 incredible. But it's intense. It is quite intense. There's um there's a, a big test. Yeah. There's um a diagnostic where there there's a room, <laughs> and there, there's um 25 specimens different kinds of plants and there's something wrong with all of them. Uh, you have to identify you have to identify what the plant is uh -huh. first of all, which right. is is hard enough. Right. And then you actually have to identify what's wrong with it. Wow. So, you know, you really have to you really have to study and 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 learn. But I think what we all learn, what people really learn from the Master Gardener program is that you might not go not always have the exact answer, but there's always a, a easy way to There's find, out there to find the right it. way to do it, right. the best way to do it. But now, you um, were recently named director of Green Towns. Mm -hmm. So tell us what that is, because it's not something that I had known about before we started talking about before you came on to do the show. It's brand new, and Green Towns is actually an initiative of a company called American Towns. Mm -hmm. American Towns has been around for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's a national company. It's, it's actually based in Fairfield, Connecticut and they have 15,000 hyper-local sites, town sites around the country that provide information, very local information, school closings, PTA meetings. Hyper-local means really focused very on the focused. local community to, to understand what's going on in your own town. Right. right. So and that's American towns. That's American towns, and they've right. been doing that for a long time. And uh, then they decided that 
the best, the, the best thing for them to do was to use that amazing platform that they have that's in 15,000 towns and use it to connect people around green initiatives and mm. celebrate the people who are doing, doing the heavy lifting. Okay. And so I guess you could go to greentowns.com? You could go to greentowns.com. And what will you find there? You'll find all kinds of things. You'll find what you're looking for. You'll find your town. Mm -hmm. You could go to, to Westport, to Fairfield, to Stanford. You can go to any of these towns. Mm -hmm. And you can find initiatives, local initiatives that are going on in your town. But really the invitation is to, is to the people you know, in, in Connecticut and across the country to go to greentowns, to join their town page, and to share the initiatives that are going on that they know about. So this is the bottoms up operation. Green mm -hmm. Towns allows you to sign up, to network with people, to find out what's mm -hmm. going on in your town that you might not have known, to let other people know what you're doing. Right, and as we've talked about, there's so much going on. There's new businesses, there's new projects, right. there's all kinds of stuff, and there's not one place where people can, can find out. And back four years ago, when I started Conscious Decisions, you know, I was trying to figure out all this stuff and trying to find, trying to put everything in one place. And I, it was so um, great when I, um, I met up with the people at American Towns, and and um, I thought, wow, there's finally going to, there's finally going to be this place mm. where we can put everything and share, you know, and really, really use all of these great things that people have done and collectively hasten our sustainability efforts because so much is going on. And if we can all just share what we're doing, we can get to the next level and the next and the next. We really have to build this from the ground up. We do. And uh, it's not going to be a magic wand that gets waved. It's a matter no. of, of people making individual decisions. and Conscious decisions. Conscious decisions, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, I like single stream and conscious decisions. Mm -hmm. that maybe a <laughs> stream of conscience. Yep. I think this is uh, it's, it's terrific. Before you go, I want I want to make sure that sure. everybody knows when your green drinks are. So sure, sure. Fairfield Green Drinks mm -hmm. is the first Tuesday of every month. Okay, and where and is it? That's at the Shack on Post Road in okay. Fairfield, 2070 right. Post Road. Okay. And Stanford Green Drinks is the fourth Wednesday. Okay. And we 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 our location varies. Right now, we're at Grand on Bank Street. Okay. And Bridgeport Green Drinks. The date varies, but we'll be meeting at Blue Martini at the Holiday Inn. So, where is the place that people can get the information about all of these? Though, so is there you do emails, right? So people I can do sign up, sign up for yes. an email list. Right? Bless their souls. Yes, they do sign up for the emails. Yeah. But I think that really the best place to find out about Green Drinks, besides GreenDrinks.org, is Green Towns. You can also find all the green drinks on uh, greentowns.com. So greendrinks.org mm -hmm. or greentowns.com, mm -hmm. two different places that you can go and find yeah. out about what's happening um, and get involved. That's right. Great. Well, Daphne, thank you so much for coming in and for all the work that you do. It's just, it's amazing when, when you see the, the list of all the things you're involved in. Um, it's, it's really incredible. You're, you're, uh, you're doing great work and you're, you know, you're exactly kind of person we want to talk to. Well, a lot of people are doing a lot of great work, but thank you very much for having me. Well, I, I come back again. Thank you. There are a lot of angry Republicans who believe that if we simplify the tax code, all will be well, and the economy will return to performance levels not seen since the 1980s. For them, of course, nothing good happened in the 1990s, or if there was something good, it was all Reagan's doing. But let's not debate that issue. In the spirit of bipartisanship, let's examine a few radical proposals for change. First, let's abolish taxes on corporations. Economists have long complained that taxing corporate profits and then taxing dividends amounts to double taxation. They're right. Already I see my friends on the left having heart attacks, but I ask you to stop and think a minute. Corporations can only do two things with their money keep it and invest in the business, or pay it out to stockholders. Now, I'm not counting buying politicians as an option, though some would consider that just another way to invest in the business. If corporations reinvest profits, they create new jobs. If they disperse cash to shareholders, the money is available for spending or other investments. Either way, it makes its way back into the economy. But here's the real beauty of abolishing corporate taxes, 
there's no more need for corporate loopholes or for legions of tax lawyers and accountants or for tax-inspired political payoffs that distort the legislative system. And if there are no corporate taxes, hundreds of thousands of finance office drones can be liberated from their nightshades and released back into the wild to find work that actually increases value. Eliminating corporate taxes would have an immediate positive impact on productivity as some very expensive human assets are redeployed. Okay, so if corporations get off free, who pays taxes? People. Everybody pays, and all income is treated equally. Wages, dividends, capital gains, carried interest, whatever that is. If you receive money from someone or something else, in exchange for labor or as a reward for taking risk, you pay taxes. If you're a working stiff on a bi-weekly payroll, you pay taxes. If you're a master of the universe hedge fund manager with billions under management, you pay taxes on whatever comes your way. But no more special deductions or exclusions. No more social security taxes on incomes only up to a certain limit. No more treating hedge fund payouts or capital gains differently from wage packets. No more estate tax exemptions below a certain amount. When money comes to you from some other source, you pay tax on it. There would, of course, need to be rules on what constitutes income, especially in areas that have been abused, like small businesses disguising payments to owners as business expenses. But again, my starting point is pretty simple. Company provided health care, taxed. Stock options, taxed at fair market value when issued and again on any capital gains when sold. Free lunch in the company cafe, taxed. Gifts from grandma, taxed. You get the idea. How much would the rate be? I'm not an economist and I haven't run the numbers. But I believe if all income is thrown into the mix, the rates would be much lower than today and that both rich and poor would have skin in the game. I also believe in a progressive tax system because at some point you really don't need any more money and spreading the wealth keeps everybody in the game. So I propose three simplified tiers. Households under $100,000 a year, which is more than half the country, would pay a very low rate. Households from $100,000 to $1 million, a higher rate. And households above $1 million, a much higher rate. Would Congress buy into this idea? Who knows? It looks a bit like the flat tax proposals that some Republicans have been pushing. And they should jump at the chance to, to eliminate corporate taxes, which is a big pill to swallow for Democrats. But it eliminates the preferences that capitalists have claimed for taking risks over working for a wage. Each side would have to compromise. Clearly, the current code is so convoluted and riddled with special deals that no one believes it's fair and everyone does everything possible to bend the rules. I'd be willing to sweep it all away and go back to the drawing board. It's time to think big. That's our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. If you live in the town served by Cablevision from Norwalk, you can catch our show every Wednesday on Channel 88 at a new time of 6.30 p.m. If you're interested in learning more about progressive political action in Fairfield County, please check out our Democracy for America group. We meet the first Wednesday of the month, 7 to 9 p.m. at the Silver Star Diner in Norwalk. We always welcome new members. Remember, change is possible, and you can make it happen. This has been Stream of Conscience, and I'm your host, John Hartwell. We hope to see you again soon.